advisor. Tell me something. How is the princess that I fancy? Has her father decided who she is to marry? She has? I'm expecting to like this answer. Going to like it? <sighs> then tell me, who has her father sent her to marry? What? He sent the princess that I have told him that I fancy greatly to the small kingdom of the peasants? Who does he think he is? With both of their co armies combined, they still only number a quarter of what my army is. There is a reason why I am the dominating kingdom within this continent. There's a reason why I am the most feared king among this continent. You know what they call me, advisor? They call me the Mad King of Conquest. So mad with power that only conquest drives me. But that is false advisor. Ready the troops. Ready the specialized stealth unit. I want the princess here by tonight. Understand? Good. and declare war on both kingdoms. They will submit and kneel down before me, especially <laughs> the kingdom of Eidensburg. Her father will have to kiss my shoes, begging me for forgiveness as I take his daughter's hand. Good. Now go. I wish to have her by the nightfall. Well, 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 if it's not for my beautiful, darling princess.
Where are you? Why, you are nowhere else than the most secure tower in my kingdom. Nothing can get in, and nothing can get out. Well, except without my permission, of course. You see, this is a very special tower. It's a tower of mana. It has no physical way of getting in. I mean, truly, this tower doesn't exist in the minds of mankind. The only people aware of existence is you and me. But do not worry. This tower is not a dungeon. I designed this tower with all your likes, hobbies, in mind. Even the ones that you had to hid away from your father because you knew he would yell at you. Every single one. How do I know about your sword training? <laughs> oh, sweet, sweet princess. I have eyes everywhere. Eyes and ears. Everywhere. And you see, since you have captured my sight, you are the ones I put my eyes and ears to focus on the most. But I wasn't foolish enough to neglect all the other kingdomly fairs that are happening at my borders. What did your father expect would happen when he decided to marry you off to a family of peasants turned nobles? Look, I know that kingdom was made after a civil war and that there it's technically still your civilians, though they don't recognize you as such. So this was a political marriage just to get your own land back? I'm sorry. Sure, on the battlefield, your father is most respectful, but not as respectful as me. There's a reason why I'm called the Mad King of Conquest. I'm unpredictable when it comes to my strategies. You can never read me and I never use the same strategy twice. Now if your father was actually smart politically, he could have handed you off to me and I could have easily wiped out that rebellion country for you. But no. Now, sadly, I have to wipe out both countries. All because of a political marriage that could have been prevented if your father was wise. Why am I doing this? Oh, sweetheart. Because I love you. Infatuated, in fact. Obsessed. Possessive. You name it. Let's just say the Mad King has gone mad for something other than conquest. I've gone mad for you. <laughs> so 
Sadly, that's not how this world works. You see, your father made a terrible transgression towards me. You accepting to marry me now won't have any effect. I need to put your father in his place. And after that, then we will marry. Your father needs to realize his foolish actions, his foolish mistakes. And over time, you will realize how to love me. Here is what is going to happen. On noon of this day, seven days from now, will be the eve of the new war, which will be taking place on the border of our two countries. You see, your kingdom possesses of greater threat than the kingdom of pitchforks and torches. My army is experienced, yet yours is not. The only arm of war it has fought is a fought against its own civilians, its own peasants, and lost. Just a small skirmish between a small detachment of my army and the full detachment of your army, I get to see what your father's plan is, even though he is a respected general and a respected king because of his war duties. But he is old, and so is all the veterans. And veterans can only train so much for war. So, I'm going to figure out your father's strategy to see how he can deal with me. Then, I'll plan accordingly. And then, I'll make a plan... To be efficient against a counter to the original plan. And rinse and repeat. See, just like your father, my army is used to my leading skills. Let's just pray that we see him on the battlefield then. Otherwise, it would be quite boring. While well, my troops have a moral morale boost as I stand there commanding them on top of my horse of golden armor with you right behind me. The enemy army, seeing you with me, will be demoralized even if your father was there. You see, sadly, yes. Right now you are just a tool, but I still love you nonetheless. But your father along with you need to pay for your transgressions. In the meantime, enjoy. This tower was made for you with everything, food, water included. I'll see you next week on the day before the battle so you can get ready and look your prettiest.
Knock, knock. Guess what time it is. Correct. It is time for the war. I see you already started getting ready without me telling. Good. Now don't get any funny ideas about trying to escape. I have a very special weaponized unit that have eyes on you 24 7 and if you make any attempts at all to try again to try and escape you will be dead within a matter of seconds Yes, I do love you, and I can't have you running away from me in the most important time, might I add. Alright, let us go to the battlefield, shall we? What a puny army that is. So weak. So unorganized. And they couldn't have picked the worst location to start their land. The war. The battle. Like seriously, they're settling at the bottom of the hill while giving us free reign over the top of the hill. No force to hide any cavalry while we have the hills to hide ours. Better yet, even disadvantageous for archers because they have to aim higher than according to my archers who just need to aim straight down. Hmm. This is obviously a trap, but I'm gonna fall for it. Send first detachment to engage. Have them sit upon the most advantageous mountain top and hold position there. Have the shielders form a shield wall at the base of the top and let the archers rain fire our uh, arrows down. Understood? Good. Now we watch. I do wonder what the trap is, though. Your father was well with hiding traps. And since it's not obvious, since it's not in the air. One shot. There could be a shot.
that your father built trenches on the hill and covered them up with thatch and grass in order to camouflage them. So whenever my detachment is posted up on the hill focused on the main army, a smaller group will pop out from behind and attack them, my detachment from behind. Alright, I think that's what he is going to do. Advisor. Have the second detachment wait shortly by at the base of the mountain. And wait. Have the archers ready their bows. And signal to first detachment. To keep facing the main army, but when they hear 2nd Detachment's horn, to immediately turn around and face any adversaries that would come from behind. Good. Alright. I have 40 detachments at my disposal at this army, while I sent 30 others to fight off the peasants with one of my trusted generals now let's see how your father plan works first detachment is set up Second detachment is not noticed by their, your military. And there's a signal horn from your army and let's watch and see what happens. And what do you know? I was basically spot on. <laughs> Look at that. Look at all those hidden hatches open. Too bad though. Too bad indeed. There goes my detachment's signal, and first detachment is already in formation to deal with the flanking units. And since the main army is downhill, they are going to be running for a while. While my swordsmen are keeping busy the flankers, my archers will be raining down hail of arrows down upon the approaching army. All according to my plan. It is all going according to my plan. You see, there's very few who can outsmart me, and your father is not one of them. Yes, look. The flankers are slowly dying off because they are severely outnumbered. Archers chipping away at the large army. Advisor, um, give the signal for the cavalry detachment to come in.
Oh, you are right. You can't hide cavalry. Well. Especially when you give us such an advantageous spot. But here's the thing. Hills are great cover, especially when you're sitting at the bottom of one. And you see... On both sides, there's an area that is smooth enough and less hilly enough for horses to come through undetected but at high speeds. Just as I have expected. Your army in shambles on the first battle. How pathetic! And all of this caused because your father was an idiot. Come on, hop on my horse. Yes, come on. If your army dares slash at me while you're on there, it shows how two-faced they are. Come on. Ooh, look at this carnage. Very few of my men have perished. Cavalry just charged in from both sides and sandwiched your main force with the flankers being decimated. You see, I know this is one of your attachments, but I know your country only has five detachments. Seems like you used one and a half for this little battle of ours. But now, since this battle is mine, I have gained further territory. See, I didn't even need to do my normal tactics to defeat your father. It's easy to counter strategy, a strategy that you know when you look at it. I can't wait to see your father. <laughs> that coward. They didn't even show up on the battlefield. must not really care about you. A real father would come after you no matter what, no matter thick and thin. He should have been here leading his troops to see if I... If I myself... Anyways, this battle is done. Let's go back to the forward operating base. Where I can put you back in the mana tower. And I continue on this war. Don't worry though. I'll bring you out when I'm at your nation's capital. <laughs> All because your father wouldn't give me your hand. This is your father's fault, not yours. Don't forget that. You're just... a victim in all of this. So go rest, and go rest well, while I finish up these weaklings. Good night my beautiful princess.